2022 Jeep Grand Cherokee Review, Detroit's Most Wanted Growing up in Metro Detroit, you learn a few truths, the potholes will kill you, the Detroit Lions are utter trash, but damn it, they are Detroit's trash, and everyone loves the Jeep Grand Cherokee. That last one surprises you. It shouldn't. Ask anyone from southeastern Michigan, and regardless of age, race, gender, socioeconomic status, or level of car enthusiasm, even the most detached Detroiter has at least a basic understanding of all interest in the industry, they'll profess their love for Jeep's bread and butter SUV. It's a car college kids aspire to own, a reliable steed for the area's families, and a safe status symbol for the double income no kids set. Bottom line, Detroitus love the Grand Cherokee. That's unlikely to change with the redesigned 2022 model. Featuring the same updates introduced on the three-row Grand Cherokee L, itself an increasingly common sight on Detroit roads, the new Grand Cherokee is as attractive a proposition as it's ever been. Viewed from the front, the Grand Cherokee is almost indistinguishable from the three-row L model. Both vehicles share a chiseled fascia, highlighted by Jeep's traditional seven-slack grille and slim headlights. I love the way the grille angles forward from the bottom to the top, and the sliver of chrome trim that supports and connects the bottom of the grille with the headlights. They are little styling details that enhance the Grand Cherokee's face. Less successful are the thin tail lights, slightly tweaked from the L, mostly white and with lead accents that make the so-called ribbon of light all the rage in car design today. The change from the three-row can't help the Jeep's underwhelming back end. The black strip that connects the lamps and holds the smallish badge doesn't do any favors, nor does the subtle floating roof effect on the D-pillar. Where the two-row Grand Cherokee makes its design cases in profile, with proportions that feel more balanced and familiar. Overall, the 3-row L is 11.4 inches longer and its wheelbase spans 121.7 inches to the 2 rows 116.7, and while bigger is better from a practical standpoint, this looks far more like the Grand Cherokees that I regularly encounter on Detroit's roads. Get your best surprised Pikachu face ready, because like the exterior, the interior of the Grand Cherokee is virtually identical to the 3-row I drove last year. During that test, I complained that there's too wide a gap between the cabin the bottom and top half of the GC lineup, with the Laredo and Limited using hard plastic on the lower door panels and on the outside of the center console. As it turns out, all it takes to hide the low-end model's cheapness is opting for the black interior scheme. While the cheap stuff remains in low traffic areas, the darker finish dulls the constant reminder of the Limited's position in the trim hierarchy making it easier to focus on the matte wood, splashes of painted silver, and attractive leather dash topper that comes standard on the Limited. The solid metal gear dial and drive mode selector is a fantastic touch, but the piano black finish that surrounds them should be the same matte wood found on the dash and steering wheel. Meanwhile, plasticky buttons on the center stack mar the otherwise impressive fit and finish. Fling open either of the Grand Cherokee's front doors and you'll find wide, well-padded seats that are somewhat lacking on overall support. Eight-way adjustability and a power telescoping steering rack mean drivers of all shapes and sizes should find a comfortable seating position. The limited trim includes a heated steering wheel, a godsend during a Michigan January, and heated front and rear seats as standard. Speaking of the back seats, you'll only find a three-abreast bench with manual 60-40ths folding. That's a departure from the Grand Cherokee Ella standard second-row captain's chairs, but one that makes sense considering the 37.7 cubic feet of cargo space that replaces the folding third row. But if you need to haul cargo, the L is a better choice, enjoying a 10 cubic foot advantage with the second row in place over the short wheelbase model. There are small differences in overall space between the two Jeeps, as well, but nowhere as dramatic as in the trunk. The size difference between two and three row has little impact on ride quality, despite the standard Grand Cherokee's 116.7 inch wheelbase, down from 121.7 in the L. Jeep limits its ride enhancing air suspension to the Trailhawk, Overland, and Summit trims, but there's still a standard multi-link arrangement on both my Limited's axles and the ride is wholly acceptable because of it. 
The Grand Cherokee renders small imperfections invisible and even larger bumps elicit little more than a solid thud with little impact on the steering or overall sense of stability. My tester added the optional 5-spoke 20-inch wheels and two 6550 tires. Even if you're concerned about wide quality, I'd still opt for these optional alloys over the standard 18-inch wheels and their two 6560 tires. The comfort improvements from the slightly larger sidewall can't overshadow how much better the optional wheels look. And even with the larger rolling stock, the Grand Cherokee keeps a tight lid on suspension noise and tire roar. Despite the rock-solid reputation of the old Arconnect 4 infotainment system, our experiences with Jeep's newer, more modern infotainment system have been, well, buggy. Seath Mirzma recounted his woes in the Grand Wagoneer, which mirrored some of the problems I had on the first drive. So the fact that I made it an entire week in the Grand Cherokee without an infotainment meltdown is a surprise. Thanks for watching. Drop a like. Leave a comment. And don't forget to subscribe to watch more videos like this.